Okay, in section two, uh, this lessons three and four, Doppler effect and sonic boom. So let's consider two people. Uh, one stood at position A and the other stood at position B. Oops. If you ever stood here and the fire truck was uh, just parked and a siren was going, both people would hear the sound exactly the same. If you notice, uh, the sound is traveling out here as a wave towards A and B, the same. Sound travels, as I uh, said in class before, uh, similar to if you drop a rock into a puddle. The sound will move out in circles away from the source. So uh, here's one sound wave, another, 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 as it moves away uh, from the siren. The distance between each sound wave is the wavelength. So if the wave's moving here, up and down, crest to crest to crest to crest, that's your wavelength. Each crest represents a high part to the sound. And when you have a trough, will be the low part of the sound. Now what happens in the Doppler effect is that the two observers will hear a difference in the sound. So as the truck is moving towards the person here at B, the sound waves are moving closer and closer towards each other. As they move closer towards each other, the distance between each wave decreases. Oops. So as the distance between each wave decreases, its wavelength is decreasing. And as the wavelength decreases, you notice that each wave is going to hit the person more and more often. So its frequency increases. And that's shown here. So this is what you would need to remember here. Oops. Is that if the wavelength is decreasing, the frequency is increasing. You're hitting more and more waves. So the person at B is hearing more sound waves uh, versus person at A. As the sound's moving away from A, the sound source is moving, so each wave is getting further and further apart from each other. So here the wavelength is increasing because the sound waves are moving further from each other, and the frequency is decreasing. And you need to remember that part there. So if you think of a car approaching on the highway, as a car approaches you, you hear the sound uh, louder as it gets towards you, and it changes uh, its sound as well. And there's a short video here that you can play uh, on YouTube that demonstrates that. This video we post on the course site. So what you can do now is pause uh, this video and go online and watch the YouTube video. And it will give you a demonstration of the Doppler effect. So when you come back to, uh, to I'll be on the next slide. And uh, we'll pick up from there. Now, uh, there is a way to figure out what frequency you will be hearing an object as it comes towards you. Uh, it's not an overly complicated formula here. Uh, it looks worse than what it actually is. F stands for the perceived frequency. So that's what you would hear. So if a car is blowing its horn moving towards you, as it moves towards you, uh, what frequency do you think it's at? Uh, o is the frequency F subscript O there. It's the frequency of the source. So if I was in the car blowing the horn, moving towards you, the sound uh, that I hear doesn't change, but it does change for you. So this will be what I would hear as a sound source. This is what you would hear as a person receiving it. And VO is the speed of the object or sound source. And VS is the speed of the sound. Okay, in the formula, you'll see that there's a plus or minus sign here. So you don't use both at the same time. Uh, if the object is approaching the person, use a minus sign. If the object is moving away from the observer, use a plus sign. Okay, we had mentioned this in class already, sonic boom, so I won't, won't spend much time on it. Uh, sonic boom is uh, similar to Doppler effect. Uh, what's going on here is that as the plane is moving uh, in the air and it's producing sound waves, the sound of his engines, uh,
cometing waves. So what you see happening here is that these are sound waves that are being produced. So as the plane's moving forward, here's one sound wave. And as it keeps increasing its speed, one sound wave hits the next one, hits the next one, hits the next one. Now, if you notice the dots here, what's happening is that as one sound wave meets another, you get constructive interference. So that's happening the whole way along. And it produces this cone shape of pressure. Now, as you see here in the picture, as a plane gets uh, beyond the speed of sound, it breaks through it. So as the plane's moving forward, it's banging into its own sound waves and creates a pressure wave in front of it. And then as it bursts through that pressure wave, it's leaving its sound behind it. So what you're seeing here is that it's actually busted through its own pressure wave. Uh, so we spoke about that. Uh, every, anytime that pressure wave hits an object, uh, it breaks the wave and you hear the uh, boom sound. Now, uh, something called Mach number and the sound barrier. When planes uh, or some cars go faster than the speed of sound, a special unit called the Mach number is used. Now, uh, so there's an example here. If on a day when the speed of sound is 340 meters per second and a plane is traveling at 640 meters per second, its speed is called Mach 2. Uh, that's because it's traveling twice as fast as the speed of sound. If a plane was traveling at 1100 meters per second, it would be traveling at Mach 3.5. So to determine that, you take the speed of the object. So if it was this example here, the plane's traveling at 1190 meters per second, and you know the speed of sound in the air at that time, which let's say for example is 340, you divide the two and you get 3.5. So that means the plane is traveling at three and a half times faster than the speed of sound. Now, it said a second ago, you use some cars that can travel uh, faster than the speed of sound. Uh, this is the official land speed record, uh, measured over one mile. And the car that you see down here in the picture traveled at Mach uh, 1.02. So that car traveled at 763 miles per hour, or 1,228 kilometers per hour and set by Andy Green of the UK and that was in October 1997. Uh, car was powered by two Rolls-Royce Spey 202 jet engines which could generate 50,000 pounds of thrust each. Now I'm not going to post uh, that video. Well yeah I'll post it to the course website but you don't need to take a look at it right now. Okay there's three examples that I want you to go through and try so at the beginning of each example pause the video you guys work through it and then I'll have the answer there for you. Okay, in this example an express train is approaching a station at 55 meters per second when it sounds its whistle at a frequency of 820 hertz to a person standing on a train platform what would be the perceived frequency of the whistle and speed of sound at that time is 340 meters per second. Okay, so we have a formula here and we know the frequency that the sound is being produced at, we know the velocity of sound and air, and we know the velocity of the sound source. So the frequency the sound is being produced at is 820 hertz. Vs is the speed of air at that time, that's 340. Vs, again, speed of sound, and here at 55 is the speed of the object. So VO is always velocity of the object. And we're using a minus sign here because as it's approaching the person, you use a minus sign. If it was going away from the person, if it had passed the observer on the platform, use a plus sign. So if you work out your math, the observer would hear it at 978 hertz, whereas the frequency of the sound is 820 hertz. So we, you should have seen that in the first uh, YouTube video that I want you to play, that the pitch gets higher because the frequency and weight, because the frequency is getting higher, the wavelength is shorter. You hear the sound at a higher pitch, so it's going to sound uh, higher to you. Okay, next question.
The engine of a race car produces sound with a frequency of 350 hertz. If the cars move away from you at 85 meters per second, what would you perceive the sound to be? So in this case here, the sound's moving away from you, so you need to use the plus sign. So we know the, we want to find out what frequency you would hear it at. The car is past you, so we should hear it at a lower frequency than what it's being produced at. So you should be able to uh, look at your answer after and understand if it's reasonable or not. If you come out with hard 350 for your answer, you've done something wrong. Okay, so we know the frequency that the sound is being produced at, 350. We also know the speed of sound in the air, 340. So that goes here and there. Again, it's moving away from you, so use a plus sign. And we know the speed of the car is 85 meters per second. So you would hear the sound at 280 hertz. And for the last question, what's the Mach number of plane traveling at 930 meters per second if the air temperature is 3 degrees Celsius? So you already know the speed of uh, the plane. You need to know what's the speed of sound at the t when it's 3 degrees Celsius. So you need to use the formula we went over uh, today in class again. Velocity of sound is 332 plus 0.6 times T, and the T is the temperature. So that's your speed of sound at 3 degrees. So Mach number is the velocity of the object divided by the speed of sound. Input your numbers, and you come out with 2.8. So the plane is traveling. 2.8 times faster than the speed of sound. Alright, that's it folks.